What's up, everybody? That's Peter McKinnon. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Barbell Medicine YouTube channel. Today's Tuesday, so you know what it is. It's Two Minute Tuesday. Today, we're talking about programming for older lifters. Let's roll that intro. <laughs> So this is a topic that gets a ton of debate and discussion, sometimes heated, and I think that we can cover a brief synopsis of this in two minutes. So let's put two minutes on the clock. Boom. So first what we need to do is define what is older. Some sources have said that it's anyone after the age of 40. Other people have said there is no uh, chronological age definition for someone that's older, and other folks have used the conventional medicine definition that uh, being over the age of 65 kind of just being uh, elderly. Uh, I don't have a firm preference on this other than it would be irresponsible to suggest that everyone over the age of 65 responds the same way to a training intervention or a medication intervention. Uh, and so I actually agree that we shouldn't use chronological age. We should use biological age. Problem is, how do you do that practically? Uh, that being said, I don't really think that there are any special considerations I would make for older people based on their age alone, rather their medical history, their training history, and other sorts of things that I would glean from an interview would probably alter my management versus just if they said they were 65 versus 64, uh, for instance. So the main thing we need to keep in mind when training someone who's older is anabolic resistance. And simply stated, this affects both uh, the effect uh, that dietary protein has on the lifter and also that their training has on the lifter. In both cases, you get a subnormal or suboptimal response to either dietary protein intake or training um, than you'd otherwise expect in a younger cohort or younger age group. So anabolic resistance as it pertains to protein intake is due to three uh, main things. One is gonna be decreased blood flow to virtually all tissues, and including that of the gut, that of the muscle. Since less blood is going to the gut, you have a problem absorbing protein as quickly. It all gets absorbed, it's just uh, less rapid. Um, you have less blood flow to the level of the muscle and that interferes with muscle protein synthesis signaling. And then actually the molecular machinery itself appears to just respond worse to dietary protein than those who are younger. Now, whether this has to do with actual hormonal fluctuations hasn't really been sussed out. Basically, what we see is uh, that older folks respond less to a given dietary protein ingestion than younger folks. So 20 grams of protein from whey really would maximize muscle protein synthesis in a younger lifter, and it almost does nothing for an older lifter. Um, and so, but if you double the dose, they see almost the same exact response. So a higher dietary protein intake um, has been suggested for older folks, even if they're not training. And then when you pair that dietary protein intake with resistance training, you tend to be able to overcome this anabolic resistance fairly readily. So for older folks, I would wanna see a higher dietary protein intake, specifically uh, high concentrations of essential amino acids and the BCAs, you know, the leucine, valine, isoleucine. Um, and so whey protein would be super uh, good here. Also, um, any sort of animal derived protein would, would work in this situation. So from a training perspective, we see that same anabolic resistance carry over here. Uh, when you give a older person a given amount of training and compare that to the response that a younger person would get from that same amount of training, the younger person in general does better, more muscle hypertrophy, more strength being gained from that intervention. Um, in older folks, when you increase the intensity from 60 to 70 to 80 to 90%, you see no improvement that's been studied a number of times. And in fact, it looks like the only way to overcome this sort of uh, uh, anabolic resistance in the older person is to bump up the volume. And, and so that agrees with what we've been saying this whole time is that uh, training volume has to go up for everybody over time in order to maximize muscle hypertrophy, which is a uh, one of the main driving forces of strength improvement uh, as we go on in training. And it appears to be more important for older folks overall. Um, again, no difference between 60 and 90 percent for muscle hypertrophy outcomes. And based on present evidence, it seems like the most readily modifiable factor to improve strength and hypertrophy outcomes is obviously volume. And that's kind of what the data is showing and, and kind of what we're preaching for. So I think that for an older person from a training perspective, I would not necessarily start them on a lower volume program. Um, for instance, the novice linear progression, I would not have them do just one set of five. In fact, what I would do is have them do the three sets of five at a lighter intensity, okay, and then ramp that intensity up 
over time, keeping the volume the same and then add volume, uh, maybe even earlier on than I would otherwise expect. Why? Because they're anabolically resistant. And anybody who's anabolically resistant is going to need a higher dose of stress to get the same outcome. I wouldn't just keep pushing the weight thinking that that's what's going to make up for the anabolic resistance because we've seen that that doesn't really work both in the literature and anecdotally. So the take-home points for older person, which we can't really define, this is more of a, a biological thing than a chronological thing, is higher protein, higher volume, the weight on the bar doesn't necessarily correlate well with improvements in hypertrophy or strength, provided you're in that useful training intensity range. And more importantly, don't consider yourself to be, uh, you know, the special population that can't train or can only train a little bit before you're just going to wreck yourself. I think that's a nocebo effect that's been put out there by people who should know better, and we need to correct for that and stamp it out. So take home messages, more protein, more training, more gains. And so I think that about wraps it up. Um, smash the like button if you dug the video, uh, subscribe for all the latest content, and we'll catch you guys next time.